discussion for the class of 2023. I was very concerned, but I do I do this for Carol again. Otherwise, I'm, I'm almost completely retired. I do this, I do a little radio show in Colorado, a million places, a little station in Colorado. I'm so happy to just be on the radio in a little station. And I still do work with Channel 13 in Topeka on taking trips. We have people from Kansas and around the country take trips through the station with us. So I was very worried about I called Ken. I said, Ken, I've got my, my WW trip. We're going to Scotland and Northern Ireland. And the ceremony is now on June 23rd. He said, we'll be gone. And I'm missing. He said, no, it's the 16th, so here we are. Or was I glad about that? So hope your wishes well. We're going to take our group of 20 and we're going to go to Scotland and Northern Ireland. And we're all going to learn because learning is a continual process. We're all going to learn a lot about that part of the world. So I'm thrilled, really, that I can be here with you tonight. So we welcome all of you who are here. We have five more teachers to adopt. Last year it was 10. Now we're back to our normal five. And we welcome you back to Webb Hall and the beautiful Memorial Union here at Emporia State University and Emporia Teacher Town, USA. So uh, we welcome everybody watching around the nation They have the capability of doing that with the live stream technology of Emporia State. Is this the live stream camera? No. No? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> so I see the lights on the east side here. He's on the laptop. So I'll look this way, right? Hello to our audience watching in Scotland and Northern Ireland and around the world. I'll be here next week. So, uh, what have you, have you got something going on for Emporia State? KDOE. KDOE, which I'll give you a shout out later. They are absolutely hard to do now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'm going to do my part first. <laughs> uh, I want to say something nice about KDOE later on. They are terrific. Well, nearly 3 million education support professionals working in schools around the nation take care of our students every day. We're in summer break now. But they still make sure they have the tools they need to succeed in our schools and our classroom. To get started with our induction ceremony tonight, we welcome Laura Jutna, and she's president of the National Council for Education Support Professionals. We recognize the education support pros of 2022 and 2023, whose biographies are in your program. Lois Jutna, would you please come up here? How are you tonight? My name is Lois Schuchner, and I'm a proud member of the National Education Association. I'm an education support professional from the great state of New Jersey, and I began my career over 38 years ago as a school bus driver, safety coordinator, and transitioned to an attendance officer eight years ago. I'm also the president of the National Council for Education Support Professionals, a national organization with within NEA that advocates on a national level for programs, trainings, and leadership opportunities for education support professionals. I want to thank the National Teachers Hall of Fame and all the esteemed guests for recognizing that it takes an entire education team to, to achieve student success and that this very important team includes education support professionals who go above and beyond to meet both the academic and behavioral needs of our students. Nearly 3 million education support professionals work in our nation's public schools and colleges across the country and make up one third of the public education workforce. We are paraeducators, custodians, cafeteria workers, nurses, bus drivers, and more who work alongside teachers to play a critical role in the lives of students both inside and outside of the classroom. We keep our schools running and our students safe, healthy, and ready to learn and day. I am so pleased to be here today to recognize two exemplary education support professionals who are leaders of their school communities and our association. Both of them have been awarded our association's highest honor for DSPs, the NEA Education Support Professional of the Year Award. As ESPs of the year, they serve as ambassadors for education support professionals across the country, promoting the value of ESP members at local, state, and national events. 
It is my honor to recognize Deborah Ward Mitchell, a proud parent educator, union advocate, organizer, and mother of two amazing sons from Illinois. As a parent educator at an infant care center, she strives to keep young parents in school and provide them with the support they need to be successful. She is the 2022 NEA ESP of the Year and Vice Chair of the ESP Council at the Illinois Education Association. This year, she had an opportunity to testify in front of the Illinois State Legislature as part of a successful statewide campaign advocating for education support professionals, pay, benefits, and working conditions. Most recently, she represented ESPs on the global stage at Education International's World ESP Conference. Deborah, will you please join me on stage? Association, my Infant Care Center family, Thornton High School administrators, District 205, my sister, sister circle who have kept me sane, my family, and especially my two sons, Daniel and Ryan. Thank you all very much for this honor. my honor to recognize Pamela Johnson, the 2023 NEA Education Support Professional of the Year. Pamela is an academic and behavioral intervention specialist for Washington State. She is a proud mom, grandma, high school track coach, and a strong advocate for equity in education. As an academic and behavioral intervention specialist, she uses her skills and expertise to ensure her students' emotional, social, and academic needs are met. As one of the few black educators in her rural Washington school, Pamela has used her platform at her high school and as a member of NEA to fight for equity-based practices in public education in her community. Pamela, will you please join me on the stage? I want to thank you for your contributions, for your students, fellow educators, and school community. Thank you. Thank you, National Teachers Hall of Fame and the National Education Association for this prestigious award. I share this award with the Washington Education Association, Rochester School District, my students, my staff, and the community who I serve and advocate for daily. Lastly, I share this award with my family, Isaac Daniel Johnson Sr., who I love with all my heart. Thank you again for this award. We are all educators who have the knowledge and skills to support student learning 
we all deserve to be valued and recognized as, as the professionals that we are. Thank you. So delighted to share the microphone with all three of you. Congratulations on your honors tonight. You all three are amazing. Congratulations. So this induction ceremony we're beginning tonight recognizes the critical enterprise that teachers play in our free society. The most important profession in the country. I think there's a little doubt about that. Our five career teachers, round points this way, going down to the end, from Rebecca all the way down to Monica. They uh, and the 150 teachers who have preceded them into the Hall of Fame represent more than 3 million teachers, which is a very small slice of that excellence of the 3 million teachers who invest in the future of our kids and teens. Nationally, we know that the teaching excellence is at the center of success of the schools and of our whole nation. So our five inductees tonight, which we proudly bring into the Hall, epitomizes teacher excellence in education. They have a combined total of 149 years of teaching experience. So that's, do the math, 30, an average of 30 apiece. Just about, yeah. And uh, with their induction of these five, we really all honor all teachers in the past and present and future. So through this induction ceremony, celebrating the excellence of teaching. This evening, the inductees get the following gifts. I love this part. They get their beautiful handcrafted 10K gold ring from Herb Jones, which we talked about earlier. The Cast Bronze Bell Tower Award created by local sculptor John Forsyth. I'm going to love this. This is why. Here's the ring, if you can see that. Each <laughs> of the ring. Senator Marshall, they have long audio clips, right? Long 
audio clips of what happened this morning. So people all around this area, all around the Flint Hills, could really, not just a little 15 second clip, they could really hear the meaning of what was done here this morning. So that's why I wanted to give a special thank you to KBOE Radio. And why is it shooting video? Because you can see the video on their website. They mentioned that as well. KBOE.com. Yep. And the 10 bucks you can give me later. <laughs> <laughs>
And I hope you took away from that experience how much we value your expertise. We want teachers like you in classrooms across the country. As the Secretary often says, though, we need better systems, not just superheroes. So I want to share not just my appreciation for all you've accomplished, but also our commitment to supporting educators nationwide. This includes improving teacher compensation and working conditions, supporting high quality and affordable educator preparation, providing high quality job and medical professional learning, promoting career ladders, including through investing in teacher leadership, and promoting educator diversity throughout teacher retention efforts. We welcome, we really need your voice and your example to do this work. And with your help, we can celebrate and support this most noble profession. Thank you again for your service. Congratulations. Um, well deserved. Thanks to the National Teacher of National Teachers Hall of Fame also for this donor. Well deserved recognition. Still being an interview with Lauren, where did you go to school? Winfield. How about a shout out for Winfield? <laughs> we have some remarks from our State Board of Education, and that is Melanie Haas, the chair of the board. Melanie, would you please come up? Thank you, Mr. He went on a road trip across Kansas and asked business leaders that very question. And while they made it clear that academics are very important, their answers more frequently referred to what most of us would call soft skills, interpersonal skills, things they don't have assessments for. So the Kansas Department of Education went and created this beautiful, colorful wheel that laid out all of these dozens of skills and even highlights the relationship between them. And we as a board and as the department can now point to this wheel and say, these are the skills. This. This is what we what we must ensure that our graduates develop to be successful. And by the way, as a business leader and somebody who hires people, I am completely on board with people having excellent soft skills and interpersonal skills. So when I think about the most important skills, a student can acquire Sherry is strong for argument, curiosity, top of my list. <laughs> she talked about that earlier. Curiosity is the skill that rises to the top and it, and it integrates with all of the other skills. And I hope that that is something that we can instill and inspire in each child. Ultimately, curiosity is the reason that I'm standing here today. When we foster curiosity in our students, we create a love for lifelong learning. Questions lead us to revelations. I had some great teachers. I'm sure that you did too. Teachers who believe in their students and who encourage and challenge them. Great teachers give students room to fail and support to bounce back. And these other great teachers are staying curious. And I discovered my own affinity for leadership because each person has a skill set that sometimes needs to be unlocked. And I'm driven by helping others discover their strengths and achieve their own version of success, whatever that may look like. I have a question. What will this celebration look like in the future? Because we have an urgent challenge before us right now. I'm sure I don't have to remind you, there's a nationwide teacher. Too many educators are leaving their posts with no plans to return. And even worse, sometime in the last couple of decades, and probably even more in these last three unusual years, we may have started telling some students, and even our own children, very quietly, don't go into teaching. You don't want to be a teacher. It's brutal. It doesn't pay well. And maybe more recently, you won't be respected. I'm curious, where will the next generation of teachers come from? I know many families, which are comprised of generations of teachers we've heard about tonight, we must ensure that this tradition continues. 10, 40, and 100 years from now, I hope this room is as vibrant as it is tonight. And there are even more candidates fighting for these seats. This is an incredible honor that's about to be bestowed on the five of you. Five of you who followed your path, found your calling, and stepped up to feed the curiosity of each child that came before you. So I want to say this to you because you don't hear it enough, probably even now. Thank you. Thank you. And to all of you who stood up earlier, thank you for teaching. Thank you for leaving it all.
rolling field day after day, year over year. You have given so much to the teaching profession, so now I'm going to ask you to give a little more. We need every educator across our great nation to inspire and encourage students to want to join this profession, help feed their curiosity, so that they can in turn unlock this in their future students. Teachers have the power to create a better world for those future generations. Because I'm technically a politician, I have to remind you that we all need to vote. <laughs> and vote for candidates. <laughs> What will you do? Will you do your part to protect the most important profession on this planet? Congratulations to all of our race tonight. Thank you for your service, and thank you for bringing so much honor to the profession that the next generation will be inspired to follow in your footsteps and continue to foster a world that embraces the most curious of minds. <laughs> Melanie, that was awesome. And as you were speaking, I was thinking of a college graduate who just got their teaching degree this past May that in 30 years might be inducted into the Hall of Fame 2053. Or maybe a baby who was born today who might become a teacher someday and even wind up in the Hall maybe 50 or 60 years from now. It's an interesting thought. Carol, what, what you all started was going to go on for generations. Well, he's the Kansas Commissioner of Education. He's a really good friend of the hall. Here's Dr. Randy Watson. Dr. Watson, come on. Okay, Doug, you've been here all week, and certainly half the night you're wondering, do we ever get to talk? All right. It's come. No, it's come. So what an honor to have you here in Kansas. What an honor uh, to be around you. Uh, I want to. I want to just as as Ralph has. There's so many people that we want to acknowledge, and these two people have been acknowledged many times tonight. But I don't think you can you can really state the importance that Carol Strickland and Ken Weaver have on this institution here at Newport State and this national future. Uh, Hall of Fame. Carol, Tim, Lisa, 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 he would not have been in Scotland had this been on the same day. I would just tell you, they would not have allowed you to do it. You know that. There's no way. So I tell Carol every year, Randy, can you be here? I'm going to be here. Because she will help me now. Okay, that's, that's, that's the truth. Uh, I, all right. We, we've acknowledged a lot of people. And so I'm not going to have you stand up, but I do want you to raise your hand like a good classroom. How many non-educators are in the room? You're not an educator. All right, raise your hand. Okay, we're really sorry for them, aren't we? <laughs> like, like they don't understand it at all. You know, you you look at you look at these outstanding people and other educators in the room, and you go, they don't get it. You get up every morning and go and go to bed late at night and stay up on weekends. Caring about other people's kids, what's wrong with you? And you know, every day you go to school and, and you say, Wow, I don't know about that one. And then you know that you go home at night and say, I, I'm gonna connect someone. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna figure that out. We we've acknowledged some people that I want to acknowledge again tonight. I, I get such a distinct privilege in my job to just hang out with rock stars in our state. 45,000 strong Kansas teachers and paraprofessionals and support personnel. Yeah. But they also would come get me. If I didn't give a shout out to the people that represent those 45,000 other support people that I love so much, 
Kansas Teacher of the Year team, stand up again. Stand up again. Thank you. And when I say it to you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All across our state representing all of the educators, and they've just been, they, they've given thousands of hours. And the first thing I said to Ron, I, I saw him tonight, I said, I need you again. All right? And that's, that, but I'll just tell you how much I love him, appreciate everything. They do, and we're going to get to celebrate a new team here in the fall. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, one of the first things, obviously, we know about the National Teacher Hall of Fame here, but one of the first memories of Hall of Fame artwork, like, like you from Hall of Fame work, was a gentleman that I remember watching in film, a gentleman by the name of Jaime Escalante, in a movie called Stand in the Lip. And I thought, wow, what a remarkable, I used to show clips of that, you know, to other teachers. I mean, he's an Hall of Famer. And it, Paul knew it would be a bit here, and so we kind of come home that, that that was just really important. And so, you know, I like to say in Kansas, there's all kinds of great educational places in Kansas that you've been finding out about. There's two really for me, what we would call the hollow ground, I think, of education. Just down the street from my office is a little school um, where in the mid-1950s, uh, we put uh, in a neighborhood school all black children. After that, there was a famous Supreme Court case called Brown v. Board of Education. And Rose School is just a few blocks from my office. Every time I go in there, and there's a, if you've been there, there's a, a kindergarten classroom set up. And you can just hear the kids. And you can just feel the excitement that they had there. The other, you visited today. Just up the hill there, uh, the, the fallen educators. And those two places, I think, resonate for us as Kansas and for all of you of just the important work that we do. So as we celebrate these five outstanding people, just realize it's not the first time that we've celebrated outstanding people that count to Bob, right? Scooby-Doo, Shaggy, Fred, Daphne, you know, um, the Power Rangers, you remember them. Uh, red, yellow, pink, um, blue, black. You remember Big Bird, Ernie, Oscar, Bird, Famous five. But the most famous five? I'm from Kansas. Dorothy the Tin Man, the Scarecrow, <laughs> the Cowardly Lion, and yes, the Wizard with the Yellow Brick Road leading away. Right here. Right here. Honoring you great people. Melanie talked about our vision. Lead the world in the success of each child. We need some help with that. And so, I have contracts for all of you as you leave here. Come to Kansas, finish out your career. 30 to 40 years is not long enough to still be this way. We are humbled and honored to be in your presence tonight. We thank you for your service. We thank you for your continued gifts that you give every day. Welcome to Kansas and congratulations. He's the one with the signature on the contract he's going to get there. <laughs> one of the things I always do while you're looking this way, I take pictures for my station, and I still am doing it tonight. Photographs for the news, the 10 o'clock news in Topeka, they're all going to know that we were here. So I'll get you. I got the teachers earlier. The, your, your monitor, your pictures look great. So they, they already have them for the news tonight. Look at you guys. Smile. Okay. This way. And I'll just say, crowd shot. <laughs> I'll put that down and grab this. We come to the proclamation. Our governor, Laura Kelly. Do you know? Do you know Laura Kelly? Have you heard of our governor? Laura Kelly has the proclamation, which she will take home with you. This is National Teachers Hall of Fame Day in Kansas, and her proclamation praises this year's 
Doug Davis calls the Hall of Fame for another job. Well done. You can read the proclamation in your program. Right now, I'd like to turn our attention to the family of the National Teachers Hall of Fame as we invite Norm Pinar, Norm of the Class of 2007, the podium to introduce our returning inductees. Norm, would you come on up? Before I depart, do you still have your proclamation on your wall at home? He does indeed. It's a nice proclamation. We appreciate that. So, uh, you've got the uh, returning inductees? Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ralph. The history of the National Teachers Hall of Fame is filled with wonderful educators who changed the world starting in their classrooms. And I always think about the uh, line from Robert Frost about going into the wood and seeing the divergent roads, and he took the one less traveled by. And that's what our five educators tonight, and you the wonderful educators in the audience, did. We took the road less traveled by, and it made all the difference, and continues to make all the difference with children and young people all over our planet. It is my pleasure tonight to introduce the former members of the Hall of Fame who returned for the 2023 induction ceremony. They are here to salute and honor these new inductees and to say congratulations in a very special way. I'd like to recognize the dynamic educators from the past. Please stand and remain standing as I call your name and hold your applause until I announce all of these of uh, the former classes. From 2003, someone we know extremely well and someone we admire greatly, Carol Strickland from Emporia, Kansas. I know, you can't, I know you want to applaud. I applaud, Carol. Yes, Carol, you're wonderful. We love you. From 2006, the land of enchantment, from Albuquerque, New Mexico, Pat Brown. Myself, 2007, from Fort Scott, Kansas. Class of 2013, Gerald Johnson, from Smithville, Missouri. Class of 2014, Gary Koppelman, from Blissfield, Michigan. Class of 2018, Brad Upshaw from Tarzana, California. Class of 2020, Melissa Collins from Memphis, Tennessee. Thank all of you very much. Um, 
that social hiking. She created an environment that's so helpful to what I can be on the team, what I can be myself. Right? So we're talking about teams and practices and curriculum. She just allowed me to kind of explore my own culture and living in the classroom. Dr. Hamilton is talking to somebody, and, uh, and you can tell she's an incredible teacher, she's an incredible mentor, and her kids have loved her. So I love that he really gives a lot of time to kind of, uh, you know, these kids that are here so we don't have too much work at once and get everything done in an annual amount of time and don't be procrastinating too much. Yeah, the, the work that never feels like overwhelming. There's always time to do it in class and it, it's always manageable, really. Exactly. It's also helping someone in general with writing papers and doing research and having the confidence that you're going to do it. Yeah, I really like that study because they give us the conflicting ideas and opinions on something that's controversial and not to really think about. For the first time, I had to think on my own and then wrote a paper related to those sources and ideas. Through Dr. Hamilton's pressure to make an independent figure, I wrote my first paper. I wasn't just an interpretation of memorized PowerPoint slides and a textbook, it was me. This is my 40th year of teaching. And for me, teaching is all about relationships. As the teacher-student relationship, I believe that I need to create a safe and inviting and culturally affirming space for my students. I also believe that I need to be relatable. I'm into Harry Potter, Marvel and DC, Star Trek, Star Wars. I have pictures of my previous students on my walls because they have given me their pictures. And I also have my picture from my senior year, so my students can remember the fact that I was once their age too. I also believe in giving students a voice, being nurturing but empowering at the same time. The relationship between students themselves and how I expect them to respect one another and to help each other by peer reviewing their work and giving them helpful suggestions. I absolutely love what I teach, research skills that students can use for the rest of their lives. I believe that it's vital that students are able to find themselves in the curriculum. And when I started teaching, I promised myself that if I ever stopped living it, I would quit. But I'm still here. Deep form of 
those things that keeps me in the classroom is knowing that I have helped that child achieve that feeling. After that, I really want them to become critical thinkers. I loved the way Brandon explained it, that he got to write his own paper. He came up with his own topic. I didn't tell him what to think. The unit we did that year, it was white privilege. Can you imagine teaching that next year in Florida? I don't think so. So I have a different unit. Uh, but I want them to become critical thinkers, to discern misinformation from truth, to go beyond superficial knowledge, to really understanding concepts and forming their own opinions. And then ultimately, I want to help students know that they can entertain a thought without necessarily accepting it. And I talked about relationships. Those are so important to me, my colleagues, my students, my administrators. You know, the relationships you form while teaching are vital. If you don't have that relationship, you can't do those other things. So that's really, really important. But entertaining a thought without accepting it, that's important to me because it's on my signature for my work email. And I also like to continue learning. So last night I looked it up just to double check that I had it right. And the exact quote says, it is the mark of an educated mind to entertain a thought without accepting it. How many of you think that was Aristotle? Well, that's who I attribute it to in my email. Looking it up last night, that's what most people say, that Aristotle said it. He did not. It was Lowell I. Benyon misinterpreting Aristotle. So <laughs> I continue to learn. That's another reason I teach. I love learning from my students. They're wonderful human beings. If you're not a teenager's parent, they're very honest with you. And I love that about them. So thank you very much. And thank you to the Hall of Fame as well. And thank you. Thank you. 
For as soon as you know that it's okay to make mistakes, as long as they are trying. I encourage students to work in groups, help each other, and discuss problems with one another. Dr. Hook is synonymous with mankind. His presence as our science department chair, beta club advisor, and mentor to teachers has made a total difference in the success of our students. We are fortunate to have Dr. Hook. After 35 years of teaching here, he is the heart of Miami High. I am honored to have the opportunity to nurture and help my students achieve their dreams. Many of you are first generation. As beta club advisor, I encourage students to become involved and live within our school and community. I urge them to participate in all activities that make high school memorable, like homecoming, pep rally, athletics, and band. Activities that will shape them to become well-rounded individuals. Aside from everything, my love the sciences and his chemistry and AP chemistry class, Dr. Hill is actually somebody that I look up to you. He's honestly one of the biggest role models in my life. A man of many hats and many responsibilities, and yet he somehow never fails to help out somebody in need. And for that, I will bring the most respect because it's the exact example of someone who I would want to be around with. Throughout my 35 year career, I am most proud of the many relationships I have fostered while at Miami High. I have seen former students grow up to become successful and productive citizens in our society. It amazes me how many of them have returned to teach, and I can now hold my colleagues. My journey with Dr. Ho began over 30 years ago as one of his members of his club, the Beta National Honor Society. I think about what indelible mark he's made here over his 30 plus years. It has not just been in the classroom. He's been a member of our community. He is a member of our staff. He's a member of the student body. The children here adore him. And more than anything, he really embodies our school model of non verbis that offers not by words, but by deeds. He is at every single moment of his life. As a teacher, I consider myself an architect of the future. I know that we are not only feeding the students' minds, but we are feeding their soul. It is our responsibility to build students who will be masters of change. I'm so incredibly humbled to be here among the class of 2023 and past National Teachers Hall of Fame inductees, the NGHF Board of Trustees, all the distinguished guests, family, and friends. I am honored to have been selected into such a scheme group of educators. Not so much for myself, but to serve as an example of the efforts that are made each day by teachers helping students achieve their dreams. Before I begin, I would like to thank those who have, have supported me along the way. First and foremost, to the Miami Dade County Public School System and my Miami Senior High colleagues and administration who have entrusted me with molding the future. To my students, who have always challenged me to be my very best. I share this honor with them. To my family and friends who have always encouraged and supported me on this journey. To the NFT and THF team, Ralph, Ken, Jen, and Carol. Thank you for supporting us from the moment we found out we were going to be inducted. To the wonderful host families, Ryan, Alex, and Stacy and to the entire Emporia community. Thank you for making us feel a part of your community. Emporia, you are Teacher Town USA. I am grateful to all of you for the opportunity to have bestowed on me to exemplify the humility, sincerity, and professionalism of all educators in our country. I am honored to be represented in the teaching profession. These past few years have been particularly challenging for all of us. COVID-19 completely changed the way we approach education. Though it has been a very trying time, teachers have remained committed to our profession and will continue to work through 
the adversity to mold the minds of you. Who would have thought that Zoom would become such an integral part of our lives? Not me. <laughs> Many times I felt like a novice teacher, even after 40, 34 years. However, instead of focusing on the negative, I was determined to see the challenges as opportunities for growth. I would have never believed that I could maneuver through a paperless classroom or that I could teach chemistry in the lens of a laptop. As a result, I have become a more creative teacher, searching for innovative ways to engage and motivate my students. Miami High, the school I have dedicated the last three decades of my career to, is like every public school, taking children from the neighborhood, nurturing them, and building them into leaders for our community. Public school students represent the cross-section of America, the rich, the poor, the working class. From every race, creed, and ethnicity, if a child wants to succeed, they are dedicated teachers to help them achieve their dreams. Public education is the very backbone of our free and democratic society. Without public school education, the American dream will remain just a dream on a table, on a table to many. As an educator, I want to eradicate the notion that a teacher is just a teacher. Too often we hear teachers say, I'm just a teacher. These words should never roll off our tongues. I, for one, will never apologize for being a teacher. No doctor, lawyer, politician, business leader, or other professional has been able to achieve their goals without teachers. You entrust your children to me just because I am a teacher. The children will gain knowledge and learn to deal with life's demands just because I am a teacher. Students in my classroom from every walk of life will have an equal opportunity to succeed just because I am a teacher. Why should we apologize? We teachers are the eminent hope for your America. The field of education needs public support and not just monetary. As evident in most elections, public apathy often dictates the misdirection of our government. The satisfied silent majority accepts and takes our profession for granted rather than becoming involved in the process and enthusiastically supporting educational efforts. Parents and the public do offer some support. However, fail to speak about teacher successes being achieved daily. And yes, it is true that our field is constantly evolving, but I strongly feel that in all, we are still a great profession with many great educators changing and even saving lives. Words cannot express how proud I am to be a teacher. I consider myself an architect of the future. A teacher not only keeps the mind, but also in many aspects helps shape the soul. I pledge to continue to rally for our noble profession because I believe that together, as teachers, administrators, and community, we can continue to uphold the values and the importance of public education. American education has not seen the last of its best days. Education is still one of our greatest frontiers. We need to be proud of what we do, of who we are, teachers, and then be the best teachers that we can be. Thank you. Thank you so much. We have more of our Florida delegation. Yeah. Dr. Karen Long. Karen, are you in year 34 or 35 for you? Complete 30, going into your 35th year. She's an elementary and middle school STEM teacher and now directs the Education Technology and Innovation Center at Montford Academy. Montford is in Lake County. I did some research. You're on the way, like if you're north, you go south toward Orlando, and that's where Lake County of Lumberg Academy is. A town of about 1,700 people. So this town of 1,700 people has a 
National Teacher Hall of Fame inductee among their ranks. So uh, here's uh, Karen's video, Dr. Karen Long, and then we'll bring her on stage to say thank you so much. There's a great quote by Teddy Roosevelt that says, no one cares about what you know unless they know that you care. Well, first off, Karen's amazing, and she can do absolutely anything. She says her way to the working at NASA, to teaching elementary schools and middle schools, and now her new position as the director of all of our deep tech here at the Academy. She has passion, she has energy, she brings such excitement to everything that she does. She's developing a program and she's building it from the ground up and just continuing to try to make it the best um, for our future generation. Yeah, she's really about understanding the ways that um, technology can impact student learning and the ways that it can improve the work that teachers are doing in the classroom. She's already doing so much to use technology in a way that enriches the lives of our students. So I worked at NASA Education for 13 years in the middle of teaching in classroom and had an opportunity to bring a program called GLOBE, which is Global Learning Observations to Benefit the Environment. And our students became citizen scientists. They were so successful that NASA came here and did a live webcast that uh, reached I believe over 30 different countries and have a viewership of over 13,000 students and teachers from around the world of uh, brand new things and, and give students new opportunities to investigate their passions. She truly interacts with her students in a way I've never seen. And there are so many times when I wish I could go back in time and be in middle school or I'm half grown a teacher because my love for science would have grown even more. Sometimes, we, I needed to be pushed on my limits, and I appreciated that because that's, it's helped me become the student I am today. And it's always just really fun to be around her because she's always making jokes and having fun with all the students. She is just like this light that will follow you around, whether or not you're sad and happy. She's always going to be there. You're going to feel close to her, whether you just met her and you know her for 10 years. She's amazing. She felt very comfortable talking to her and very comfortable going to her to have a question. And I think that was really, really important. As we moved from Jamaica four years ago, and it was just difficult for her to adapt into middle school. And I think it was just stuck around with herself. That's in the sky. You can see all the dominoes fall in place. Every piece of the puzzle is there. And the thing I love most is when they take that concept and they start applying it to everything else that's in their life that's relevant. Um, it is one of the most gratifying things about being in the education profession and it is the thing that keeps bringing back every single day. Here's Dr. Karen Long, if you want to visit.
He was there in the dawn of my career and always stood by and encouraged me to take risks, including living in D.C. for a year as an intern for NASA headquarters while he stayed in North Carolina. My in-laws, Steve and Barbara Long. Barbara is also an educator, and I always marvel at how she navigated her position as an administrator with grace and respected her even more when she semi-retired back to the kindergarten classroom. My children, Horace and Randall. It's been the three of us for a very long time. And I brought these two with me to NASA education events, drug them to award ceremonies, <laughs> like today, <laughs> and now have the chance to share this moment with the two of them. Above all else, I cherish the role as mom, and has been the, it has been the most important and most treasured. They are the light of my life, and my heart bursts with pride for these two amazing young men. I hope that I have made you equally proud of me. I love you both. And to Randolph, who nominated me for this honor, thank you from the bottom of my heart. <laughs> to Gil and his little boy Alexander, watching right now, I guess. <laughs> my sweet boyfriend, who has been cheering me on for all of my career accomplishments and goals these last three years, and the year I've needed to help me process difficult decisions. He has been saving grace on many occasions, and I love him for that and for many other reasons. Our dear friends, the Krizans, who traveled all the way by car from Virginia to be here with me tonight, and who also stood by, by my little family through some of the toughest moments in our lives. I love you all. I would be remiss if I didn't credit former teachers that I have that are in my personal hall of fame, even though they may not be in this one. Mrs. Yoder, my fourth grade teacher. Alice Hendricks, my sixth grade science teacher who brought the love of science to me. Don Carrick, my TV and production teacher. Suzanne Degby, Sandra Lear, my Queens University education professors. Faye Austin, my internship host educator. Donna Parker Tate, Dr. Vanessa King, Paul Quick, Rachel Adams, Troy Urquhart, Emily Cracker, David Bernatovitz, and Kim Brahman, administrators who not only challenged me, but pushed me to be my best and represent the profession at its highest level. Mrs. Patricia Campbell, Wendy Zimenez, Scott Werner, and Jocelyn Roberts Judy, some of the very best colleagues I've had the honor of working side by side. To Ken, Carol, Ralph, and Jen. You helped keep all of us straight in this wild ride we've had over the last few months, and I'm grateful for your leadership. My Emporia hostess, Lynn Lang, who immediately made me feel as if I belonged here in Emporia, as well as all of the other NTHF volunteers and citizens of this beautiful city who picked up my children, invited us to dinner, and countless other kindnesses. My heart is full, and I will carry you with me always. Most importantly, of all the thousands of students that I've had the privilege of having as my kids, they will always be known with that title. There are many others I could name, but we'd all be here all night and Ken wisely limited my time to my five minutes, so here we go. <laughs> While in DC last month, my colleagues, now my friends, discovered exactly how much we all have in common and of the amazing experiences we've had, the highest one I value is kinship. Our profession is designed to be practiced socially. We are with our kids for eight hours, sometimes more, in teachers' lounges, staff meetings, professional developments with our peers. But all too often, we find ourselves alone. And in this present day, that feeling is imposed on us by politicians who have little to no experience or background in our profession. Teachers are being verbally attacked. Our profession maligned, and all of this sums up the feelings of loneliness. Back in 1986, not long after the shuttle Challenger exploded upon liftoff with uh, astronaut and teacher Krista McAuliffe, unintentionally making the ultimate sacrifice of her life, as while as then President Reagan said, she slipped the surly bonds of Earth to touch the face of God. I came home and shared the decision with my parents that I wanted to change my major to education. The conversation with my dad went something like this: Yeah you know you're not going to be making as much money as TV journalism. Me, yeah, yeah, I know. Him, the 
you can pay your bills and that's all that really matters. You work to live, you don't live to work. The only thing that really matters is that you love what you do, Karen, because you'll be doing it for 30 years or more. I'm starting number 35 here. This is your dad, and I do love it. Teaching naturally attracts those with a servant's heart. That love for our profession is the thread that ties all teachers who have dedicated their lives to education. But as love tends to do sometimes, it exposes us to pain when we are most vulnerable. When there is great pain, there is great love. I've come to realize how true that statement is, but not just in our relationships. It's also true when we pour ourselves into our work. That's what our profession of education requires. Every dedicated teacher sacrifices their personal time, salary, and to some degree themselves in order to provide a better future for their students. I believe it is a trait that makes us, our, makes us the unique human beings that we are, true servants to the children and adults with whom we work. Education is the foundation of our society. I believe it is the single most powerful force that preserves the country's place in the world. Yet there is not one mention of education in the U.S. Constitution. While the establishment of education is one of the powers reserved to the states under the Tenth Amendment, education is not a constitutionally protected practice. Every time that this idea has been challenged, it's been affirmed by the U.S. Supreme Court. Now we're in that too, but I think that this is where the Founding Fathers got it wrong. It should have been one of the specific amendments, and perhaps had it been that way, teachers wouldn't have to fight as hard as they do for their students, for their livelihoods, and for one another. Our profession is the foundation for all other professions. Would a doctor be a doctor if they hadn't learned the scientific method in elementary school? Would a lawyer be a lawyer if they hadn't grown an appreciation and a love for history? Could a mechanic be a mechanic without the skills taught for problem solving? Could an author write a best-selling novel without the passion for books and understanding of the writing process? Throughout my three decades in education, I've seen evolution in our profession. Sadly, the spark for each of these educational fires are emitted from those that have little to no knowledge of our profession. There is a prevailing attitude amongst those in leadership positions that one can do education if they have been in education, in school. In other words, I've been to school so I can do school. One of my favorite activities to do with my sons when they were younger was to build great buildings with their blocks and with their windows. We would sit for hours, select a block, click, take it apart, knock them down. In the countless numbers of times I've done these buildings with, with my kids, I have not one time proclaimed that I am an engineer. In the countless numbers of times I've amended knees with band-aids and taken temperatures, I've never proclaimed my title of doctor until the dissertation committee awarded that distinguished distinguished, and it was for educational technology and not medicine. So why is our profession so maligned and undervalued? I wish I had an easy answer. With so many dedicated professionals like the other four sitting here tonight, and those on the walls in the museum, as well as those that are enshrined on the Fallen Teachers Memorial, who gave their lives for the children that they served. It would make sense that we as a society would benefit from elevating those in our profession. In a book by Robert Evans and Michael Thompson titled Hopes and Fears Working with Today's Independent School Parents, they speak of the inherent irony that underlies tensions between educators and parents. Both teachers and parents are deeply devoted to children, but each is ready to fear and dread to the other. Each wants what is best for children, but the different roles and perspectives can cause disagreement about what's best. How do we solve the problem of isolation and the lack of respect for our profession in today's society? There are the obvious answers. Give us a salary that is worthy of our work. Provide better training on the pre-service level. Assign every new teacher a strong mentor that will nourish and support the growth of our newest professionals. Award those that pursue higher education and training to better their performance in the classroom. Before any of this, there is one important thing that could be the catalyst for all these items to happen, and for it to be done correctly with lasting impact. I call it BT4, and no, that isn't the name of the new K-pop group. It stands for Bring Teachers to the Table. You see, by gathering together with four other outstanding educators in our profession, in D.C. I learned through our kinship that we have a powerful voice. Three Florida teachers stood with one another. 
in a powerful stand against politicians who were unceremoniously dismantling public education in our state. Teachers from Connecticut and Texas worked tirelessly through a national organization to affect positive policy change. Five teachers gathered here to speak about what concerns us and makes us proud to hold the title of educator. And perhaps we will influence you to go out and speak for us, not the five, but the many that are in the classrooms affecting the lives and securing our country. I am in the sunset of my career and I'm worried about our profession. I see young teachers leading the classroom by the thousands. An article by Dun & Bradstreet highlighted by a November 22 study by We Are Teachers revealed that 80% of teachers plan to or are considering leaving the profession in the next one to two years. And of those planning to leave, 40% said they will leave the profession completely. As I look toward retirement in the next decade, what am I leaving behind? Who will take our place? I want to charge each one of you in this room that cares about our profession to bring us as teachers to the table. Let us use the professional knowledge we have gained by investing years of our lives to fix the chaos that has been created by those that who are not a part of our profession. For the teachers and other educators in this room, I ask that you open your eyes and your hearts to the colleagues around you and seek that kinship as I have with the four teachers inducted today. Education in today's classrooms looks very different from when I began this journey in 1988. Chalkboards became whiteboards, which became smartboards. The technology I had when I began in 88 consisted of color chalks and calculators. Today's students are doing virtual dissections and meeting experts via distance communication. At the moment, in the midst of multiple crises that include the banning of books, silencing educators from teaching real history, the overwhelming pressures of tests that do not truly measure student achievement as markers for teaching competence, and marginalizing important issues that affect our students, there is no more important time than now to look to educators, the professionals, to bring education and educators to the status of where it deserves to stay. There is nothing more powerful than a bond between professionals with the same driving philosophy and belief system to affect change. BT4, bring teachers to the table. Allow us to do what we have been trained to do, to strengthen the profession that we have dedicated our lives to a profession that each one of us loves. I'd like to wrap this up by reaching out to my newest friends, Becky, Eric, Kristen, and Monica. I am humbled and honored to be in this class with you as the amazing colleagues that you are, the beautiful people that you are, the gracious hearts that you carry to serve the children of our country. I am forever indebted to you for your friendship and your collegiality. Thank you to NTHF for this platform. I am honored to be a part of this great institution, but I'm even more proud to carry the title of educator. Thank you. Karen Long, ladies and gentlemen, she amazing. <laughs> Kristen Record is in her 22nd year. She teaches in the high school ranks, 9th through 12th grade physics. Now, let me get with you on that. So, I mean, physics and chemistry, I have two. I need some help if I ever call on that again. She teaches physics at Frank Scott Bunnell High School in Stratford, Connecticut. So, now let's take a look at the video for Kristen Record. Here it is. Quantum physics is a beautiful concept known as duality. Einstein won the Nobel Prize for showing that light is a particle, but the double slit experiment shows that light behaves like a wave. It is a wonderful thing not to be just one or the other, but both. This is how I define myself as a teacher. Kristen Breaker is a consummate professional. She is intelligent, passionate, hardworking, and one of the pillars of Mount High School. I have high academic standards, but I focus on the whole child. 
add value to problem solving and analytic thought, but also creativity and deep conceptual understanding. She is both. I will be welcome down the hallways and I always hear something going on in the classroom. The kids are engaged, they you know they're talking physics, they're doing physics. Can tell that she is in solo and so she's so in love with the position she teaches, but she does truly care about her students. She does truly care about you know, how they're doing outside the class and how they're doing in the class. She's not just there to like, teach you like physics or like whatever she's doing in science, but she wants to help you and help you grow as a student and your own curriculum. It's very difficult to help her and diverse other teachers. Mm -hmm. There's always a safe space for you to want to talk to you, but for them to just sit and listen. She always writes my bag and puts a smile on my face, and I love how you kind of like She's also very hard to very fun, you know, to be. For my students are both teenagers and adults. Kristen didn't just teach me to be a teacher, she taught me to be an educator. Kristen is a walking resource of being a teacher. But if I make decisions both around the school and the district level, I always work with her, but I use my Kristen record lens. Uh, to try to see everything through that, so I know that I'm putting students and staff at the forefront of all the decisions I make. I'm a learner and a leader. My classroom exists both in school buildings and in legislative halls. Kristen's pedagogical practice extends throughout the years of her classroom. In terms of policy and advocacy, her expertise and skill are second to none. I wish that you could see her prepare colleagues for a dinner in the hall. I wish that you could see her work with some of our members and finalists for Connecticut State Teacher of the Year. She's not looking at the work of the position, what's going on for us, and making sure that everyone is active. I had the pleasure of meeting her when she first came into the district for her interview. I thanked her and the supervisor, said to me, This woman is going to be a long story. We want to start shooting this. We love this record! Who I am as a teacher is simple. Just like farm mechanics. Thank you, Dylan. Who are you? Christian Rucker. Please stand up <laughs> and talk to our audience. Congratulations on this. We're so happy for you kids. Teacher number 154. Plus, that group. So you're not going to get away without hearing a reference to Star Trek. Um, as a physics teacher, I was compelled to begin my remarks tonight with a reference to the show that I started watching when I was a kid, Star Trek The Next Generation, with my dad. Um, I eventually then branched back to the original series, all the other franchise. So imagine how excited I was when Star Trek Picard was coming back. <laughs> I loved it. So, in an episode of Star Trek Picard that, ironically, I watched at the end of March, right around the time that my induction to the National Teacher Hall of Fame was announced, um, there's an episode where Captain Picard comments, you're only really as good as those around you. Your crew becomes a part of you, completes you. They lift you up to accomplish the things you never could do alone. I remember watching that and stopping, thank God the pause. And I sat there and thought, oh my God, this is what just happened to me. I remember reflecting how true that sentiment was to getting me to this point in my career, to this incredible honor that we're all here celebrating tonight. So who's my teaching crew? Um, for me, that begins with my parents. My, um, both my parents are public school teachers. They're retired now, but collectively they taught for over 70 years. My dad was a high school physics teacher. My mom began her career as an elementary teacher and later finished her career as a sixth grade math and science teacher. 
They showed my brother and I that being an excellent teacher meant being a multifaceted, lifelong learner, and that teaching was the single most, most important profession that you could choose to do in the service of your community and in the service of others. Incidentally, my brother and I both became physics teachers, so I'm sure you can imagine what some of our family conversations are like. Later, my career expanded to include the teachers and the professors over the years who saw me, who saw the real me, who challenged me, who encouraged me. My chosen professional home for the past 23 years has been the Stratford Public School System at Penel High School. We have an amazing, dedicated, talented, fun faculty. And I am so very grateful for the mentorship, the leadership, the support, and the space to grow and learn and excel that has been afforded to me by so many people in that crew. When I was named to be the 2011 Connecticut State Teacher of the Year, my crew expanded again to include an amazing network of inspiring educators around the country, several of whom have become an integral part of my life over the past decade. I am a better educator, a better person, because of their influence and their excellence. I would never be standing here tonight were it not for my crew. Justice Captain Picard would never have been able to do what he did if it were not for his crew. So for the people in this room and the people watching on the live stream, it's you who lift me up and I am so very grateful. Since the nomination was, um, the induction was not, um, announced, um, these past two months, so many times over the, with the space when we were in Washington, D.C. and here in Emporia, each of us was asked repetitively, what keeps you in the classroom? Why? Why do you stay? And partly that's a sad question. Do we ask that of other people in other professions? But we all get asked that a lot. Why do you stay? How do you stay? How do you do it? So I actually serendipitously got an example of that while I was here this week. Um, unlike here in Kansas and the East Coast, we're still in school. So um, <laughs> graduation at my high school was this week. I'm a senior class advisor and I missed it. So I got an email two nights ago. Um, it was an end of the year goodbye. It says, Ms. Record, where do I even begin? Still sitting here in disbelief that I graduated yesterday and I can confidently say I wouldn't be where I am today without you. I remember how scared I was at the start of junior year to take your class, thinking there was no way I was capable enough. Yet here I am after taking my second year of AP Physics. I never expected senior year to be as hard as it was, and you were there to support me every step of the way. You're the only teacher throughout high school that I ever opened up to about my personal struggles, and that speaks volumes to how amazing you are. I still remember that day you pulled me aside after class in October because you noticed that things seemed off with me, and that conversation changed my life. You showed me that it's okay to be vulnerable, even when it may be really hard. You showed me that advocating for yourself is something that's a strength and not a weakness. You showed me how my struggle with anxiety shows my bravery and perseverance when I've always viewed it as a negative. You've always believed in me, even when I haven't believed in myself. Words can't describe how thankful I am, but I'll try. Thank you for having your classroom door always open to me, whether that meant during a prep period or lunch or letting me crash your other physics classes and providing a safe environment. Thank you for being flexible and finding ways to make me feel more comfortable with my anxiety, whether that meant extra time on a test or needing to take a walk during class in the hall to calm down. Thank you for all the times you sacrificed to have a heartfelt conversation with me, for expressing your interest in me, not just as a student, but as a person. Thank you for the times you emailed to check in on me, for celebrating my accomplishments, for being there for me. Thank you for all the memories over the past two years. Yes, I will always remember all of the fun we had in your AP physics classes, especially flying the pigs. But more importantly, I'll carry the lessons you taught me about myself forever. 
I never knew that taking, making a decision to take AP Physics last year would change my life for the better, but it has. It's incredibly hard to say goodbye, but I'm excited for the next chapter. I hope you're having a great time in Kansas this week. It feels really cool to know one of the nation's most amazing teachers. This is what keeps me in the classroom. This is what it looks like to be all in as a classroom teacher. And this is what every child deserves to have in their schools, every child in every school. Yes, we should all be passionate about learning content, but more importantly, we need to center that passion around caring for the entire person that sits in our classrooms. I changed someone's life. That's what keeps me coming back year after year after year. And I know that it will keep me coming back for years to come because I'm just starting 23. I think that it's important that we celebrate things like this. It's not a sound bite. It doesn't make the evening news, but this is what makes the teaching profession so important, so impactful, and makes it be the most important profession that we could do in the service of our society and our community and to, on an individual to individual basis. I'm so proud to be a public school teacher. I'm proud to be the product of a family of educators. And I don't ever want to use that phrase, just a teacher. I am a teacher. I'm proud to be a teacher, and we are all proud to be teachers. And in closing, I want to extend my thanks not just to the staff and the volunteers and the host family of the Hall of Fame, but to the entire Emporia community, because you exemplify what it means to elevate the teaching profession. You have all been incredible to us this week. Your love and respect for teachers and the teaching profession is palpable. And it's not hyperbole to say that if what we experienced here in Emporia was emulated by the rest of our country, we would be in a far different place than where we are right now in education in our country. You are the shining example of what needs to be done in other communities around this country. And I thank you for sharing your heart and your soul and your love of teaching and our profession with all of us. And it has just been a tremendous honor and a wonderful experience to be here. Thank you. Washington and I'm an English teacher. 
I taught English for 19 years at both the middle and high school level. Then I served as an instructional coach for the next six years, supporting teachers all around the country to do cool things in their classrooms. Um, I always wanted my classroom to be a place that students couldn't wait to get to. I know not everybody likes English. In fact, many people hate it, but I like a good challenge. So I challenged myself to create that type of learning environment for my students. I wanted them to work together. I wanted them to listen to each other. I wanted them to challenge themselves and challenge their thinking and to always issue with an open mind and to say when their mind had been changed. Um, I wanted them to be seen, to feel seen, to feel valued by not just me, but by each other as well. Um, so today I made a Facebook post and I invited former students to shoot me a voice note or some pictures or just a written note about the thing that they remember most about my class. I think it's always great to see if you did the thing that you thought you were doing. And so with that, I would hush and I would love for you to see my students and hear from them about all the things that they remember about me in my class. Thank you so much for listening. When I was in Washington's class, one of the things that made it different and special from the class that I've had in the past uh, was that rather than say, this is the right answer, she would ask us you know, our thoughts on the books we read and what we thought the author was. And never really told us like that was the wrong answer, that wasn't what they were talking about. Uh, you know, she always found ways to tell us that's, that's a good way to interpret it. We made our opinions feel valued uh, rather than just tell us, you know, that's not right. I enjoyed every moment of my time in Ms. Washington's class. I always liked writing, but her teaching sparked a love for it and a sense of confidence within me. I appreciate how she taught with passion for the subject and her students. I still find myself pulling from knowledge I've learned from her over the years. Thank you to the community of 
in Korea. I said yesterday that some places we go, they'll tell us, we're rolling out the red carpet. And that's nice, right? But sometimes it feels performative. I'll just say it. They want to say they support teachers. Um, and it feels very temporary. The welcome we received this week, though, feels so genuine. And like the carpet is always rolled out here in Emporia for teachers. So thank you. Thank you so much for that. And to my incredible, incredible class. I just want to thank you for being the best people to go on this journey with. You are amazing human beings, and I'm so honored to be in your presence. Taking care of me. I wasn't planning to say this, but the other night they sat in the lobby of the hotel with me until after midnight, making little bitty Lego bags for the children's day activity. When we were all tired and had a long day. So I love you all. I feel like I have known you forever, and I hope I do know you forever as my friend. So I wanted to tell you really quickly about an, an activity and assignment that I always say to my students, and I just called it pie chart of your identity. It was really important to me to have them think about who they are and how they became who they are. And so I would give them a pie chart and say, what are the slices? Who makes you who you are? What makes you who you are? How do you get your perspective? And so many of them would just say, 100% me, nobody. <laughs> and I would say, go back, go back and think about that. Um, so I thought about that. I was thinking about what I would say tonight, and I decided to do that assignment for you. Um, so what are my pie slices? What are the pieces that make up my professional and personal identity? And so I wanted to share a few of those slices with you before I have my seat. Pie slices. God, who saw fit to give me a mom who made me love learning. Though she's not an educator herself, she has said a thousand times, I could never, I would <laughs> never, right? Um, she is in the healthcare profession, but she was my first teacher. And she taught me to love learning, to learn, to love reading. She is a lifelong learner herself. And she has always called me on the first day of school to tell me that I am the best teacher she knows and that I am so amazing and that my students are so lucky. One year she forgot. <laughs> I still say, Mommy, Mommy, you didn't call me. And so I forgave her. She called me the next day. It was a ritual, a ritual that we had. But definitely one of my biggest high slices. My husband, who also is an educator, who has been beside me through all the bad lessons I taught, all the great lessons I taught, and all the incessant conversations about what I would do the next day. Um, he inspires me, he inspires his students, and so I thank him so much for that. And for being on my side as, a, as I grow as a human being, as I grow as an educator. To my little sister, Tanya, who I think is watching tonight, who also is an educator, a PhD, the smartest person I know, um, she also takes care of me. She thinks she is the big sister. Um, she often prays to beat me up if I don't do right. And I know she means it. But they are why I am the way I am and why I am who I am. I'm also who I am because of my fourth grade teacher, Mrs. Askew at A.B. Hill Elementary, who made me feel like the favorite. I later learned once I became a teacher that she was really good at just making all of us feel like the favorites. And that's a special skill that educators have. You walk in and you're like, I'm your favorite, right? We're your favorite class, right? And I'm like, mm-hmm. <laughs> we do that work on making everybody feel like a favorite. I am who I am because I was raised in South Memphis, in a place where people said, don't go there, don't teach there, because those people are there. So I stand here to say that I am those people. I'm a Hall of Fame those people. <laughs> I stand here because of my amazing colleagues at Chickasaw Junior High School, my very first school in 1998 when I began my career, um, to my amazing colleagues at Hollis F. Price Middle College High School on the campus of my alma mater, Lamona College, to my colleagues at Texas High School, 
to my colleague that better lesson who coached with me, um, thinking of creative ways that we could inspire teachers around the country. I stand here because of State Teachers of the Year, who are amazing human beings, to my class of 2014, who became my family in 2014, and I never, never thought I would meet such an amazing group of people. Um, so to my Inistoy family, I love you. To my NEA family, my Texas State Teachers Association family, of course, again, my Memphis family and my Texas family, who I know are watching. I stand here because I have taught the best students, and those students taught me how to teach. When I thought I had everything I needed when I walked into the classroom in Memphis, Tennessee in 1998, and they let me know quickly that I still had learning to do. I thank them for that. I wish I could name you all. I am so proud of you. Never, ever be afraid to be who you are. And when you find yourself in places where people don't respect who you are, or when you find yourself in places where someone um, makes you feel as though you are less than, I say to you, leave and leave quickly because you deserve so much more. When you find that a restaurant that you, you want to go to is honoring who you are and valuing your identity, but someone else doesn't want to go there because that restaurant honors you, well, I say three words. Let them starve. They are <laughs> likely already full of heat anyway. And to those who pretend to support education, but we know that that is all just a front, I say to you, rewind and listen to what Karen said. <laughs> My students, I've never been in front of a microphone that I didn't want to say something to you. You are brilliant. You are powerful, you are beautiful, you are my kids. You will always be my kids, even though you are in your 30s, you are still my kids. You always will be. You are a big part of my pie chart. And I hope I stand here because I believe in service to the community and in serving alongside my students. I hope I'm here because I serve other teachers and I serve the profession as a whole. I hope I stand here because I believe in making my students feel seen and feel heard, and that the classroom has to always be seen as a community first. That is why I hope I am standing here. I want to also say thank you to those who gave words to the Hall of Fame to let them know just a little bit of insight about who I am as a person and as an educator. Those people who wrote letters for me when I was deciding, you know what, I'm dropping out of this process. Life is hard right now. And they said, no, we will write the letters. We will come clean your house. What did we do to take them all right? We should do this. Thank you for not letting me drop out. Ryan Murray to Kimberly Percy Reese, who is the epitome of what a parent supporter should be. She is amazing. To Africa Fanny Mill, to my former student, Raven Morris, if you go by the Hall of Fame, there is a letter that she wrote for me. Oh my gosh. She let me know that the things I was trying to do, I must have been doing it a little bit because she is amazing. She's now a teacher. I don't know if I said that, but she is. Um, so thank you for telling people about the community that I tried to create. And this person probably isn't expecting me to thank her, but thank you to Misha Bill. Um, there are some people who are not educators, but they show compassion and they bring beauty to the world. She's my friend who does my hair. And I wanted her to know that I love her and I thank her for being such an amazing, sweet, compassionate person. Thank you to Dr. Anna East, 2014 Montana Teacher of the Year, who was the first to tell the Hall of Fame that I deserve this honor. And I know I stand here as one person, but behind me, beside me, all in this room, are the spirits of educators all over the country who are Hall of Fame, but because of circumstances, because of there are only five per year who won't ever have this honor. But they are Hall of Fame. I stand here for them. I want you to know that you too are Hall of Fame. Please know to those educators that I go forth in this role as an ambassador for our profession and I will continue to say the things that you need me to say in all the rooms you need me to say them. I see you and I honor you. And I want to make sure I don't sit down without thanking the sponsors. I want to just say to Kirk Jones, when we saw our pants in D.C., there was a collective, <sighs> So thank you to all of the sponsors as well. And though we celebrate tonight, 
we all know that this is just the beginning of deeper work that we will all do to continue to honor and support students, our profession, our community. My pie chart is full. My heart is full. And after I take a nap this weekend, <laughs> I stay ready to do more deeper work on Thank you all. Would you like for your husband to present your ring to you? <laughs> so do you, want, do you want Ralph to present your ring on two feet or one knee? <laughs> well, he is right over there. Officially in the Hall of Fame after a member of the Hall of Fame reads the charge to you. The charge was written by the late Helen Case, who was the person who was in that first class of 1992. And tonight we have the honor of bringing on Pat Graff from Albuquerque, and uh, she's a member of the class of 2006, who will actually do the honors and read the charge, and then you will all be in. Pat, are you ready for one? Come on, Pat. Pat Brown. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Alice. Alice is a part of this, too. Alice is a part of this. I mean, I to be a Yeah. Well, you were in the chair. You are the chair.
This evening, we have reveled in the glimpse into the essence of your teaching souls through your videos, and we have been inspired by your comments. All of these activities and experiences now culminate in this moment where 150 members of the National Teachers Hall of Fame eagerly wait for you to join them. With the power invested in me by the National Teachers Hall of Fame Board of Trustees, I now declare you member of the National Teachers Hall of Fame. Days that you have been in Emporia, 
preparing for this important occasion, you have witnessed the love and admiration of other Hall of Fame members, of those associated with the Hall of Fame, and the public at large, especially the people of Emporia. When all of the festivities are over and you are returning home and napping, you will then realize what a wonderful experience it has been and the humbling honor you have received. If you can accept this honor in humility, assume your responsibilities with willingness and vigor, remember that you are representing all other exceptional teachers throughout the country, and gratefully acknowledge the help of many, many people in your journey toward this day, then you are definitely worthy of the title member of the National Teacher Hall of Fame. Congratulations, and God bless you as you continue to serve the most precious people on earth, our children. Welcome to the National Teachers Hall of Fame. Thank you. 
So are you ready to take all your things back home? <laughs> I know you've had a wonderful week and it's been a wonderful night to be here. So uh, we want to thank all of the sponsors and the partners and a thank you to all of them for this very special induction ceremony. I've been so thrilled to be your MC tonight. I hope you've been inspired and moved by what our teachers have said. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of our induction ceremony, the 31st annual. Yeah? We have a question in the front. <laughs> Two like this. Yeah. 31. And uh, you're free to take the table decorations, the centerpieces. With the exception. But not the books. We do not take the books home from school. <laughs> Can do they normally do they fight for the centerpiece? Sometimes. So see, uh, talk among yourselves if you work well with others. <laughs> Who would take the centerpiece home? I do know that I, I sure hope I don't have a trip. We're going to get together in June 14th, June 14th of 2024, for our 32nd induction. And uh, this is where I'm going to love you all, love these teachers, love all of you being here, love all of you being here too, and have a nice night. We'll see you next time.